Here I'm going to show you how to generate a unique list of random numbers in Excel using a formula. And I'm going to show you four different ways to do it that cover older and newer versions of Excel. And like I said, there will be no VBA, no programming here, just a formula. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right, here are the four methods. And the first one, we have two variations of it. So let's get started with that one. It is the most versatile, the most robust. And for the first version of it, you give it a minimum value and a maximum value. So here I want the random number to be between 100 and 999, inclusive of those numbers. And then you have the formula down here. And I hit F9 to recalculate. And it's going to update every time always with unique numbers, always between this range, and as many as I want. If I only want one cell, so one number between that range, that's it. If I want two, three, four, five, I just copy the formula down, and it gives me that many unique numbers from that range. Now let's take a look at the formula. It is quite gnarly, it's quite a large formula, but you only have to change a few things. So to make this work for you, download the file and then copy this formula. And the first change to make is for B3 and B4, you need to point that to the cell where you have the minimum or the maximum. In a moment, I'll show you how to make it so you don't have to have separate cells for these. That's the next version of this formula. But if you use this one, change B3 and B4 for those cells right here at the beginning of the formula, right here as well. And then at the very end, also a B4 and a B3. And make sure that you put dollar signs in front of those references as well, because you're going to copy the formula down. The next one, very, very important, is here inside of the count if. You've got a reference, two references, although kind of a funny looking range. That must be the first cell above your list of unique numbers. In the same column, just one cell above it. So we cannot have this in row one. It must be at least in row two to begin with. Later on, you can move it up. I'll show you how to do that. And the first part of this reference must be with dollar signs. It must be an absolute reference. Then you need a colon, and then you need the same cell reference without dollar signs. This is a very interesting little feature that I'm going to talk about in the next tutorial, where I talk about powerful techniques for building complex formulas. And what this does is, as we copy this down, this range will grow. So you copy it down one cell, and A6 here becomes A7. So the whole range becomes A6 to A7. Copy it down again, and it will become A6 to A8. Notice here, A6 to A8, and the range has grown. So it's a very important reference to make, and that's what allows our numbers to be unique. I'm not going to cover this in depth now, don't worry. But let's go back up here. We still have one more thing to change to make it work, and that is A1. And you don't so much have to change this as much as you have to watch it and be careful because when you copy it around, move it around, this can change. A1, it just has to be a reference in row 1. And then when it gets copied down, it'll be A2, and then A3, and so on. But for the first guy, it has to be A1. So those are the only three things you have to change. It's kind of confusing, but B3 and B4, update those guys in three places, right here, here, and at the very end, dollar signs for all of them. Then A6 to A6, just make it the cell right above your list. Then A1, make sure it's A1. Now once you have this with the correct references, you don't have to do anything else with it. You just copy it down for as many values as you want. It's so easy to use. And the beautiful thing is, let's say that your minimum is 1 and your maximum is 5. You only have 5 numbers here. Where did the other guys go? So it doesn't matter how low you copy it, nothing will appear there. And that's due to the lovely if error function right there. So it is a very versatile, nice, and easy to use function. But sometimes you don't want to have separate cells for your min and your max. You want to have everything in one nice, neat formula so you can copy, paste it, use it where you want. And this right here is the same version as this one, just with all of the data inside of it. So all of the values, so the min and the max have been pulled inside. And then at the very end as well, 999 minus 100. Don't forget the guy at the end. It's very important. That's the only change between this one and this one. But it does look a little goofy, so let's compare them. 
over here we have indirect inside of rho. And that's a more advanced way to build powerful formulas, which I'm not going to cover too much in depth here. But the point is, this right here is making the exact same reference as this right here. Well, the numbers are going to be different now because it would be 1 and 5. But with indirect, this is what we are trying to create. So if you hard code it in, just follow this pattern and you are good to go. With the C6 and C6, that doesn't change. And A1, nothing changes there. So choose whichever one of these you want and use it. I recommend you use this formula. I don't think you should use anything else from the rest of this tutorial unless you really, really have to. And the reason is because two of these work for Excel 365 only, maybe Excel 2019. And so if they work on your machine, but then you send it to someone who doesn't have the newest version of Excel, it's not going to work. If you use this one, it's going to work in pretty much all versions of Excel that people use today. But now let's go with the other formulas. And here is the Excel 365 version of this big gnarly formula. And we have an index unique rand array and a sequence. This is a very interesting way to generate the random numbers. What we do is we create a very big list of random numbers right here. So many, many more than we actually need. And then we remove all of the duplicates out of it, return only the unique values, and then use sequence to tell the index function to return however many items we want from that list. So how do you change it for you? Well, 100 is the lowest possible number that you want it to be. 999 is the highest possible number that you want it to be. Set those to whatever you want. And then, however many values you want to appear, change that right here. So here I have 10 values set to appear. And then you change it right here in sequence as well. So if you only want five values here, we change that to five. And we can change this to five. And if you want to make the lowest 10 and the highest 100, you do that and you hit enter and you're good to go. Now the next thing is that you may want to actually freeze the values. And that's so that when you hit F9 or do anything else. So if I go over here and I type something and hit enter, everything gets recalculated. You probably don't want that. So what you can do is copy paste special values. Copy it, select all of your data, control C, and then you can just right click and go to paste special and then go to paste values like that. What it does is you have only numbers here now, no formulas, no functions. So when you hit F9, nothing updates. But how you should do that, and you really just need to memorize this, is just select your data, hit Control C to copy, then Alt E S V, enter and then it's done. But let me do that quickly so that you can see why I recommend doing that. So I've got my data, I'm working, I select it, Control C, Alt, ESV, Enter, Escape, I'm done. Learn the keyboard shortcut for copy paste special values and you will save a lot of time. And you can do it just the same for this guy. It's just converting the formulas to the visible values so that your unique list of numbers doesn't change. And there is one thing that I forgot to mention for these guys. For the rows, you want to select them, and then you want to hit F4. So there are dollar signs in front of them so that they do not change when you copy them down. These you do not need to have dollar signs in front of. They're hard-coded numbers. They're not going to change. But these are references within the row function. So now if we copy this down, and go here, 100 and 999 will still be the same. As you can see, it is very easy to forget absolute and relative cell references, especially with playing around with big formulas. Or we could have even left indirect inside of row and just input 100 and 999. There are so many things that you can actually do that this tutorial will take way too long if I cover them. So let's just move on from this now working with the absolute cell references formula and skip this one that we just did and move on to the very simple versions of unique random numbers. Now, of course, everything here isn't technically random before somebody says that in the comments. It's not really random. It's what I believe is called pseudo random. But for the purposes of Excel, everything here is random. 
So here we want a very simple list of numbers, say 1 to 10, but we want them scrambled in a random order. And all you have to do for that is type 1, then 2, select those, and then copy it down for as many values as you want. Then go over here and input the rand function. And the rand function generates a random or pseudo-random number between 0 and 1. You get a bunch of decimals, and then we just sort it. So let's add the little filter buttons up here, actually, and say that we want to sort this guy smallest to largest. Now this is all jumbled up. And you can have the list as big as you want, and once you have it sorted how you like so it's all jumbled, then go ahead and delete the order column, and you're good to go. No problem. I'm going to back that up a little bit. And now let's move on to the new version of this for Excel 365. So here we're going to do another very simple thing. Let's say 10 numbers, 1 to 10, and then sort them. So we use the new sort by function with sequence and rand array. Sequence generates the numbers that we want to use. So if I select that and hit F9 right now, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And random array is how we are going to generate them. And when you just input a number like this without all the options that we did previously, that will generate 10 decimal numbers. So here we have our numbers, and then it will sort this array right here by this array of numbers with decimals. And that's what creates the random arrangement of these numbers. And if you want to change how many there are, you just, let's say, go 5 for this, and 5 for this, and you're good to go. And of course, copy-paste the special values if you want to freeze that. And that is four different ways to generate random, unique lists of numbers in Excel. Once again, I do recommend going with these guys up front. And I told you I'd tell you how to put this guy in the first row. Well, you build it, you copy-paste special values, and then just copy it into row one so it starts there. And it's no problem because by that point, it's all hard-coded values. And this is the point where I would usually go ahead and explain this formula. But what I'm going to do is save that for next week, where I'm going to show you the five or six really interesting things that make this formula very powerful that you can also use in your own formulas to make them powerful. So stick around for next week when I go in-depth on that. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.